struggled in some of the tournaments like the Huya the Legend Cup 2023 season 3 and the WRL 2022 season number 2 falling off on the, on the hands so against JD Gaming and Nova, and Nova Esports but they have learned from that for sure and now they made the necessary corrections made the necessary trainings to prevent those instances from happening again and this is the time for them to actually you know show themselves that they are the team to beat they are the team that is rising up to the challenge and they are the team that can actually take the first swing to an opponent they're meeting for the first time yeah this is the chance for them to prove themselves and uh, roster why with the bands that we've seen from the last game Senna has always been picked during the last three games that we had and it's always a very big priority for the cn conference but i am looking at an ash angle we haven't seen an Ash Ooh. during the past games, but in the APA conference, Ash is always a prevalent pick. Ash is always banned. Aatrox is always banned together with them. And I'm surprised that we haven't seen that a lot here. Mm hmm. And, well, maybe we can see it in this game. I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And yeah, given the different, this is the thing the difference in like priority and champions in the banning the picking now prevails a couple of champions rising up like the Camille like the Shen being available and both of these champions are actually heavily favored towards the CN conference JT might actually prioritize these picks yeah if Ro Roll Survive would be prioritizing that, they do have the as he said yes the 6 is gonna be a good pick here for their side but I want to see a lot more, a bit different right here for them. Yeah, the Fiora are going to get picked against the Camille. I like that. I want to see that. I love that. Rattel as well is very, very strong uh, in this champion. Very high win rate. Yeah, I believe 65% on this champion. And he needs all those chances going up against Don, if ever. Because he's going to be a key, key player here in this game setting up momentum in the baron lane if ever here for kt rolser yeah rolser y is going to be having a bit of a problem here for because the gragas was available and they weren't able to pick that up if the nautilus is going to be available on the second rotation too could be a good pick for rolser y just for them to counter out or not even that if they want to go for the brahm it's going to be an okay pick too for rolser y just for them to have that easier access to a lot of the cc karma we haven't seen this too during the last game so i do hope to see this karma on the bot lane together with the gragas they have a lot of wave clear to work with but looking at it for all survive they're prioritizing the galio more which is honestly good honestly good mm -hmm. that provides some protection double global um potential here for all survive and that is a good response actually towards the possible engage of JT. Especially that they do possess the Camille, the Gragas, and the Karma. So in terms of engage and disengage potential, that is a lot of angle that JT can actually have in this game. Now both of these teams are can actually bank on more damage. You know, KT does have a lot already with the Fiora and the Ziggs, but JT might need a little bit more. Yeah. Let's see what they're gonna do here for for the next rotation of our picks because the Kha'Zix and Zed are still available. Yeezy and also Zero are good players of this Assassin's. Akali is still available. Oh, rather, sorry. Akali is down, but they still have the a lot of picks that they can go for here. The Yone is still available for Wolster Y, so they can go for the mm -hmm. angle considering that Kha'Zix is also banned. So that is a good pick here for uh, Wolster Y. Lee, I mean, I'm just throwing it out there at the moment. If JT wants to become very, very extra aggressive in this game, maybe 0711 can actually pick up a Lee Sin because he is, is really talented in this champ. And that's something that is really favored in the CN conference uh, lineups. Having that, for, that, that uh, engaged priority and also that big burst damage in synergy in synergy with other champions like the Camille, the Gragas, and the Karma can be much beneficial, especially in in lineups like this, uh, like in the side of KT Roaster, wherein they would prefer to group up with the Wukong, the Galio, the Ziggs. I think they might need something that oh. can actually split them up. Oh, this champion has been very much preferred in the CN conference. I am interested 
to know the, the reason why. I mean, it can do a lot of work, but that's the difference between PAC and the CN. In the APAC, we don't see a lot of, of Shin Zhao's, but in, in the CN, they love it. I do hope to see this, especially for the Shin Zhao. We haven't seen a lot of Shin Zhao getting picked a lot because of the the how linear Shin Zhao is. But on the hands of a great player, Shin Zhao is going to be good, especially in a composition like what Wolster Y has, has a lot of melee champions. That's going to push them back. And that's going to be what's important here for this team overall. Because with JT and not even prioritizing the Galio a while ago, they much prioritized the Kragas over the Galio for the combo very easily. I like this Sinzao pick because they could just uh, get onto the Ziggs, use the ultimate, and be able to just shut that down as fast as they could. Mm-hmm. And I'm really excited to see this. The difference in 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 in, in style and in taste of this dif very different regions. Now we see them now we see them clashing against each other. The aggressive nature of the CN and the safe side in the team fight base composition here of of KT Roaster. I am thrilled to see who is gonna come up, come on top of this. Will it be KT Roser or will it be JTM? Let us know in the comment section, of course, who are you rooting for? Especially that this is their first time meeting in any sort of tournament. And who is going to land the first blow? We are about to find out in this first game. Yeah, let's see who's going to be winning on our sides because that's going to be important to note for this one because it's the first game. Our Series 2 is going to be coming up and this is it. This is going to be their stage and this is going to be their chance to prove against each other who's the better team. Mm. Yazzie, as a Corky, will be uh, looking to poke out Zero for the meantime here. Yeah, given the range advantage, of course can have that, especially at level 1, where in the Yone doesn't really have that soul unbound as the moment to provide you know, additional gap close uh, capability. DY also just helping out a little bit in the uh, the laning phase. And I think their goal is to try and know where 0711 is so that they can track him down and maybe deny a couple of resources against him. I do hope that they have a lot more here for well, sir, why? Because their composition does really scream a lot of damage, but not a lot of utilities as well. I mean, they have the Wukong. Whenever you don't have a CC on your team, a Wukong is always going to begin to get over the Galio. But I hope that they would be able to stay a, to sustain a longer in this When it comes to the late game, I believe that they still would have a lot of insurances to work with, which is really nice for them. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, for sure. The scaling as well on the side of KT is really impressive to see. Because they have a lot of angles that they can actually take in this game. They can group either group up or have some split push for Rattel. So having that angle or having that choice is actually really important in this game. Because yeah, you can have a much more solid penetration power when you have a linear composition like, like JT. But when you have more options, you can have that backup plan uh, set in place. If Rom if Rattel actually wins the laning phase or if he doesn't, and if they reach early game or maybe even the late game here for KT. I think that kind of stability shows so much discipline and knowledge in any sort of team. It is very important, especially when you're going up against a team that's ha that already has so much stability. Let's see how they're going to do that, though, because they still have this uh, two-minute mark, and we're not going to be seeing any fights, because remember, we do have a Corky and a Yone in the mid lane. They're not going to be fighting against each other for sure. But on the top lane, oh, mid lane, though. Yeah, Zero taking all damage there. Almost got taken down if ever he got hit by 0-7-11. Fortunately, with a flash, was able to. And yeah. Dodo. Oh. Gotta go win, and... I don't think he, that's the right thing to do, though, as yeah. there is a lot of people from the side of JT. They do have a lot of things to work with here, though, Guillaume, because with what they have for a JT, the advantage of them, even in the early game, is because of the Gragas and also this uh, power that they have from the Sin Zhao. And that would be the reason why they could go for this aggressive fight. Look at DY. Look at what he's doing, though. Mm-hmm. Just, uh... 
applying so much pressure they're chasing down and tracking down do <laughs> and every time the most <laughs> majority of the game even a while ago right when the, the game actually started was checking the raptors and trying to to see where this wukong actually is that might be a problem going ahead in the future here Guillaume, because with what they could have here one of the problems that they need to face is how they're going to be facing with how DY is playing. DY is a very well decorated player and you know what he does and you're seeing it right now. The pressure that he amounts to the members right here of Roster Y, that's the big difference of a uh, Roster Y against J Team is because they have someone like, look at what he's doing. He's just moving forward. He's not even afraid of anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the uh, that's that's his preference. That is taste. That is what he that that's kind of his responsibility in his job right now. And it's doing a really good job at it. You know, in just becoming that irritating support, messing with the uh, intended rotation of Do. And while it is a Wukong, he can just uh, try to sneak out of those uh, messy situations. But again, as these attempts accumulate look, look at it it's it's actually forcing due to rotate towards the top side jungle just because of the irritating move here of dy is working is messing with his mind yeah this is a must problem here for them because of the way that they played around it Thaw is even afraid of going forward or even taking the Rift Herald as fast as he could because look at that look at the top side they're Ooh. even going forward Don 128 wants to even stop them from taking this yeah do gonna be contested heavily oh. so much in that forcing the flash now JT can actually go, go towards this Rift Health. DY going in with the DY too aggressive though. Down, has to flash away with damage coming Backline. in from the Karma. Gets the Wukong down. Here comes the package coming from the... Oh, yes, he was doing a lot of damage. KT has to back away, but here comes DY. Zero in the front. Nearly getting the kill onto DY. One for zero Ooh. trade. JT still has gotten the advantage. That was scary. I thought they're not going to be able to actually do that. But because they were able to survive for so long, Roaster Y did a pretty good job. Ooh. But J Team, look at this. Oh, wow. Okay. He got the kill with the shield of Duran to set it up. No, Mel. Really good job. Thumbs up. Great start of the fight there. I mean, as we expected, look at this. Look at what happened mm. onto the back line. Yitzi and also Barry was just looking at the back line while everything is happening right there. And it wasn't expected by Rolster One. Because of that, this bottom lane tower is in danger. Double objectives taken by JT. They actually go in on oh, the tower. Oh, damage. 257 HP. But yeah, the damage is really high coming in from 0711. Top side, Yezzy being contested. The flash by Nomel to get that oh, shield Ooh. of the run. Nothing that DY can do. So unfortunate for, for JT. Can't even do anything. Now look at Rattel. They had to ready and taking down JT here. It's just with what we're seeing so far, right? Um, It's a good thing that Rolls of Y has been fighting toe-to-toe -to -toe against uh, J team against this, but the macro, we can see that J team is gaining advantage against uh, Rolster Y. It's a bit rough, but they know what to do. And that mm -hmm. marks the difference between the China Conference and the Rolster Y being from Korea. So much aggressive and proactive moves coming in from JT. And well, KT having some angles that they are taking, like getting the kill. Uh, getting the kill onto the uh, onto Yezzy, but I, I don't think it's gonna be enough, you know. Comparing it to the double objective that JT actually has gotten, plus you know a tower takedown, due to the the force that Don 128 is actually doing in the bottom lane. So yeah. with this, a gold is being accumulated, and I'm getting nervous here for KT. Really scary, honestly, for K for Rolster Y, they are losing a lot of their space. Look at J Team. Look at that, what they're gonna do to Nomel here. Yeah, they're gonna be diving. Oh, hero exit. Bye bye. That's Nomel. Fortunately, he was able to back away. The tower's still safe. JT setting up a death brush. But I don't think KT can actually defend at all on this tier one tower in the top lane. They have to give us away and another small win again gotten here by jt yeah another win 
and the, this is they're just not gonna stop on taking these objectives look at how slowly this gold lead is just gonna balloon in favor of jt as long as rollster web doesn't do anything jt is just gonna be gaining and gaining on the members here and they pile on Ooh, almost a uh an engage there towards 0711 but a 1v1 is still happening here in the bottom lane on the ratel and don that unfortunately has to back away as Dawn is just having a massive amount of impact in this game, very mechanically skilled in avoiding some of those damage coming in from Ratel. Katie might uh, might need to fall back for the meantime because them grouping up is not uh, like allowing them to get anything for now. Yeah, you're still not getting anything, anyone. Because what we're, what is happening right now, Giyang, is that the problem here is is it's still not done. Because with how JT is doing. They're just slowly devouring Volster Y. Look at what's happening. Just, it's like they're putting a web on the map. And that's why until now, Volster Y hasn't taken down the tower. Yeah, and that's such a big problem here for KT. Well, they uh, they will die under the tower. DY actually doing a really good job here trying to prevent Yezzy trying to fall back, flashes away, but unfortunately will still get caught there by do a lot of resources used in the bottom lane as well as four people you know but good job by dy actually preventing some of those recalls so now push is being done in the mid lane 0711 gonna be engaging here as uh, barry actually flashes oh. enforcing that fate sealed by zero but they still will get the tower top lane is also being pushed the camille dawn is going in oh the mid lane dawn, what? gets the kill onto the yone wow that is just so much <laughs> uh I mean, you you got killed as well, but still, that is a that is a gold taken there against KT. Yeah, really good for JT to actually do that. They got some two kills on their side though, which is pretty important to note. And now with that, they can start and take it again. JT, not even faced with the kills that they gave, they are just gonna be taking objectives for objectives and don't even care about what happened. Yeah, they, they they're getting everything and. In the side here of JT anyway. And 11 minutes in. We're slowly seeing more and more gold lead. Going towards the hands of JT. And KT, yeah, they're, they're playing it slow. Yeah, they're setting up some picks. But it's not really having the best impact that they intended to have in this game. And yeah, okay. You, you have that, uh, that late game scaling with Ione, with Fiora. But at what point... Will you, will you, you know, hold on towards JT's aggression? At one point, are you going to be giving those advantages? Because the scaling of, of JT's uh, lineup is also present, especially with the Corky. A while ago, we saw its damage doing massive already, despite it being like nine minutes, not 10 minutes into the game. And as the game goes on, he will get more. And ooh, okay, if they are going to be trying to get the kill onto uh, Dawn once wait, they will do. That's impeccable timing and unfortunate there for JT. But now it gives an opportunity for KT to maybe get something across the map. Yeah. With that roster Y, even just taking the kills. And this is what advantage they would need. Opening up the map a bit. And they want to go for the bot lane whenever they want to. But though, we'll be able to see one. And DY is going to be the target here. Yeah, Chain CC forcing the flash. But oh, do won't. Wasn't able to close the distance. Oh, there's 7-11 though getting caught and it forces JT to actually group up as well. Nice use of the cask! And they will Ooh. punish that over aggression. Now it becomes Dude, a disaster a for Kate. And here comes Don 1 to 8. One to get his revenge. Two people killed already. And no one will fall down on the side of J Team. One tower on the board for Volster Y top side, but they got the kill there just because of the great use of the cask, as you said. That way, that opened up the fight, and DY got his revenge. He was able to fight against his bullies a while ago. Yeah, definitely such a an unfortunate case there for for Volster Y. I mean, well, it, at least Rapel was able to split push a little bit towards the top side. Now is in the bottom lane trying to, you know, get that same impact. So, ever here we do see uh, a uh, higher view on what happened. Yeah, 
Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> that was yeah, a nice. That was a, that was a uh, good view. <laughs> yeah. And again, with this, it's gonna be coming in for the Baron. Baron's not gonna be taken unless Yizzy already does have the third items. Right now, you still don't have the third item. Once he got the third item, that's a chance for JD to actually go for that objective. Right now, we've seen Roaster Y taking the kills during the early game, but JD just in one fell swoop. They equalize the amount of kills and even having a 5.6k gold lead at the forefront of all of it. And smooth execution as well, especially with the impact here of DY. Eyes on him later on for sure, because he's going to be making more of that cast. Face Seal is going to be down here onto the Corky, but only forces the Valkyrie. And I think that's much more detrimental here towards Roaster Y. Especially that yeah. Fate Seal is usually a key spell whenever there's an objective or something. Yeah. And what is important here for a J team is that the, look at how they play around the map, right? They're rotating pretty fast and Rolster Y. Look at them clumped up. This is the difference between uh, this J team and Rolster Y. The way they play around whatever is missing, they're forcing them to react and they play around wherever Rolster Y isn't there. Because when Rolster Y isn't there, that's an easy objective. That's an easy farm angle for J team. And that's what I want to see for the macros with this incoming teams. And that is expected for teams in the Chinese conference. Macros, micros, economy as well, going towards JT's favor, basically, in this game. And we do see the kind of difference in, in, this re in both of these regions so far. And it's heavily being in favor of JT. It might be... a uh, Something cooking up towards top lane by Roser Y, but they won't be able to spot anyone out since uh, Yezzy already fell back. And Dawn just continues to do his job here in the bottom. It might be better if he, he was on top side to provide that pressure in the split push, but he wants to actually get closer here towards the other members of JT as they, uh, they see the dragon spawning up, taking it already. Dawn just. Uh, Whoa, going out, but they back. actually go in once again. Wow, Forced so much away. damage! Yeah, they can take can this. They easily. actually steal it. No steal, zero gonna be going in, but actually being done with a hextech ultimatums. He will be falling down. Mega JT winning nothing in terms of damage. He can't do anything. Zero, seven, eleven with all those sustained goals. Golden as well. Here comes oh, Don the star. Yeah, you got that one for one, but still. JT just killing every single member of KT right here, except for Normal. But what can you do when you're all alone okay. here in the mid lane? Yeah, but one of the things that we've seen there during that whole fight was the way they played around the isolation. They do have Barry, or rather, they do have Yetzi and even Don 128 during that fight. And that's the reason why they were able to win. They isolated two targets that easy for them, but now they might be able to end this game. Yeah, nothing that Nomel can do. Wave is still That's a game. very healthy here. And it's in 17 minutes.